What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York back at the Gramercy Theater. And this time in person, we are here with the Butcher Babies. Great to be able to talk with you in person. Yeah, we're excited to be here. Um, we love New York City, obviously, and uh, we haven't played the Gramercy yet. So I think this is our first yeah. time, but we started the day off great. We went to the gym. We're feeling good. It's going to be a fun show. New York always treats us like family, so glad yeah. to be here. We love you here. This was one of the most anticipated tours. I mean, this is the first, you know, post-pandemic uh, tour that uh, we've had uh, with you guys. So, like, just I know it's kind of a cliche question to ask, but to be on stage again, unleashing this, you know, repressed energy that we've all had for so long, how does it just feel? I mean, it's obviously incredible to be back out here and seeing everyone in the crowd who missed live music as much as we missed playing it is just awesome to see them. The emotion in their faces, that's what matters the most. So we're happy to do it just for everybody in the crowd again. I feel like you know, we're halfway through this tour and uh, the first show we stepped on stage, it was the most adrenaline I think I've ever had for a show. Mm -hmm. um, it was terrifying but also really exciting more so terrifying because um you know after not touring because we didn't tour in 2019 because we were recording and so not touring in three years that was a big deal i know so the, like, stepping on stage it was scary because it's like oh do we have we still got it i mean we do <laughs> you most certainly it, do it i've took, been watching it, the video oh yay thanks it just it took a little bit of time to kind of like uh grease the wheels again but you know um, like I said, we're halfway through and it feels like three years didn't really pass. Well, speaking of going back to the past, though, because you're performing Goliath in full tonight. I mean, lo looking back, because I've always admired your lyricism and how they've expressed emotion and have expressed your feelings. Do you feel like after w all we just went through that maybe Goliath has maybe a little bit more context now than when it came out in 2013? Or mm -hmm. does playing this album almost give you that like throwback feeling like you feel like you're playing back at Mayhem 2013 or something? You know, to be honest, I don't I, I think that. Um when we wrote those lyrics, a lot of those lyrics came from old journals that we had been writing in since we were teenagers. Yeah. So um, it was a very cathartic thing to write that album together, get those thoughts out together. Um, but I think that those are emotions that we've been through, we've worked through, there was a process and we've been through it all. So now we're on to other things. So for us, it, it doesn't feel, I don't think it feels like we're back in that time. I think more so, I think it we, because we've talked about this extensively since we've been playing these songs uh, personally between us. Um, playing these songs, I feel like, really does give us a sense of, oh wow, we've grown a lot past these songs. Um, to me, you know, the lyrics, of course, you know, we wrote some of them in high school, some of them before that. Um, and we are super proud of those songs, but we definitely feel after playing these songs live again, there's there's a lot of growth that's happened since then. And it doesn't really necessarily throw us back into those emotions, but it does give us a sense of gratitude and the growth that we've had. Yeah, I, I've always said that with you know all of your full length albums, it's not a continuation of Goliath, a continuation of this, it's yeah. just a continuation of evolution. And yeah, I think yeah. there's constant evolution. Yeah, demonstrated. and that's the thing that we're very um, proud of in Butcher Babies is that each album really is different. Everything you hear from us is very diverse. And so, you know, our second album, Take It Like a Man, sounds very different than Goliath. Still metal in our eyes but there's also a little bit more maturity to that than there was with goliath and then with lilith that came out and that was the most diverse that we've done and then you hear our new songs that has to make it easier for songwriting to maybe bring in some new like out of left field material right it's not like you're thinking about it has to sound like this there's got to be plenty of flexibility in the song we've always been flexible we've never said to ourselves when we're writing this has to be like this. We have to stay true to this exact sound. Yeah. We've always explored every side of ourselves. We are such different people, each person in the band, and we all have different tastes and flavors. And it's like when it comes together, some of the stuff is so weird, but we're lucky that we have the kind of fan base that lets us be weird and quirky and lets us do whatever we want. We've never been ostracized for not, you know, staying true to exactly the formula we had on Goliath. There is no formula. We're just butcher babies. Yeah. I mean, if you can even hear that with our newest single, it's Killing Time Baby. It's silly. 
it's silly, it's fun. And I think that over the years, one thing that we've noticed is that if we're having fun in these songs, the crowd is going to have fun listening to them and they're going to have fun going to the shows and screaming along with them. And so, um, you know, even on Lilith, there's a silly song, Pomona, Shit Happens. And we have just noticed that our sillier, more fun songs really resonate the best. But then, of course, we have some serious shit we need to sing about, too, for our own therapy. You know, mostly we're here to party, but we, of course, need those therapeutic songs, too. Well, contrast, I've always said, is the best way to describe Butcher Babies. You have I've always said that I've I've been known to quote uh, uh, what I said about Butcher Babies music for your funeral, but also your bar mitzvah or your wedding. (laughs) I like that. I like that. Yeah, we've definitely got it all covered. Right. Maybe childbirth too. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. My sister said it, uh, <laughs> the last baby she had, she's like blast metal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I mean, after seeing goat whore play at a wedding, I'm willing to see anything okay. now. Yeah, so, I'm into it. <laughs> yeah. And kind of going back to like, because having that experimental sound has allowed you to play with like a variety of different bands from Mayhem 2013. Uh, the first time I saw you play actually was the Nonpoint tour that you did in 2018. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But now you're touring with Infected Rain and Stitched Apart, which I think is a dream lineup mm-hmm. for any diehard fan of butcher babies i mean have you noticed maybe different crowds like when you're playing with guar as opposed to like non-point for example of course there's always a different crowd and luckily we've been able to span most crowds and get good there's only one band that we toured with i'm not even going to say who it was there were a couple shows the audience we were opening up did not want to see us only a couple shows that we usually uh can win crowds over in fact heidi and i have a little game we like to play if there's one sulking person in the front row that doesn't want to see the opening band they want to see the headliner we you know we like to play a little game get them to smile get them to at least like a song in the set and then we've made a fan for life um but like i said luckily um metal heads are so receptive they just want to go have a good night so usually if we're opening for a band we win the crowd over and if we're headlining you came to see us right so (laughs) but yeah each each tour has been different um you know we've been touring since 2011 so for us every single tour has its you know unique ups and downs headlining is a lot of responsibility too and so this tour is really really fucking fun and it is a dream lineup for us to go out with our friends but also you know it's a lot of you know responsibility to put on a headlining show and you know make an entire package the best that it can be because it's not just about us it's about the whole package and so that's one thing we've been so excited about with this lineup we know that stitched apart is going to go out there and they're going to kill it and we know infected rain is going to go out there and kill it and one thing we are very excited about is bringing infected rain here for the very first time North american tour yeah more appropriate too their first tour was going to be with a swallow the sun Mm -hmm. i'm like but they're so like i mean you know their music is very intense and serious but like it's very like doomy it's like so like talk about contrast Mm -hmm. this is like i feel like the more appropriate tour I feel like it's you yeah. can really see that all the bands get along too. Yeah. You know, we go out there and we support each other. So that's I, important. I've been seeing that on the posts. <laughs> and because uh, I did the interview, I do a thing. Whenever I interview an artist twice so close together, I have to add a couple fun questions to end the interview. Okay. Sure. okay. We're into it. You've toured all over the world now at this point. What is the worst thing you've ever eaten? Hmm. I can't think of anything like terrible that we've eaten we've eaten some interesting things there was a a burger truck that had camel burgers that pulled up outside of a a club in uh, the uk that we had well yeah i mean i like all food except for cantaloupe so anytime that there's like a um a fruit dish with just cantaloupe and honeydew makes me want to vom but other than that (laughs) fair enough i I pretty much will try everything makes you want to vom i know i'm just i'm channeling um our teenage fans (laughs) all right is it lit (laughs) just kidding (laughs) all right question number two most painful spot you've all ever gotten tattooed oh um probably my elbow Either that or um, this hurt like a motherfucker. Oh, really? Yeah, it hurt. It felt like my finger was getting cut off. But other than that, everything else has been not that bad. I'm not big on tattoos. I have some on my feet. So I guess I would say that because Mm -hmm. I don't know much else. (laughs) Fair enough. 
Fair enough. And the final question is, because we were talking about engaging the audience, what is the strangest thing you've ever seen in the audience on stage? Oh. Oh, I don't know if we can even say. I mean, we played The Gathering of the Juggalos, so I think we could just oh, leave yeah. it at that. Yeah, there's lots of interesting things going on there. Say no more. Mm -hmm. I've always said the Juggalo movement is the American Norwegian black metal movement. <laughs> but uh, We've had a blast every yep. time we've played, so. <laughs> yeah, but thank you guys so much and looking forward to the show tonight. Yeah. Everybody, we are here with the Butcher Babies. New music coming very soon. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We'll see you next time. <laughs>